Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We know that God is going to meet us in this time, and so truly there is no better place to be. We would love the opportunity to get to know you and to care for you. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will be on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know how we can be in touch and also let us know how we can be praying for you this week. Now I invite you to take a big deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer for the season of Lent. You'll find the words on your screen. Let's pray now together. Merciful God, search us and know us. In this season of Lent, grant us courage to take honest stock of ourselves and acknowledge our wrongdoings. Jesus, as we walk with you towards the cross, take away our bent to sinning and teach us how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello Church, I'm Eun Siu Kang, one of the associate pastors here. It is my great joy to lead us in our prayer. Please join me as we pray together. Holy and loving God, thank you for calling us from our busy lives to worship you and to rest in this holy place. Center our spirits in your love. 
open our heart to your transforming word, for we are ready to realign our spirits and to remember your words. Lord, we long to walk in your path. We yearn to follow you in the ways that lead to life and wholeness. Yet, it is hard to know if we are taking the right path on our journey of faith. We easily forget how much you have blessed us, how abundantly you have provided for us, and how graciously you have filled our lives. Guide us in our journey and grant us the wisdom to distinguish between our needs and our desires. Help us to be content with your provision. Lord, empower us to be generous stewards of the resources you have entrusted to us. Show us how we can make a difference in our world and community by sharing more of what we have with those in need. May our heart be open to the deeds of others and may we respond with compassion and generosity. We lift up to you, O Lord, those who need your hands and your comfort. We ask your peace for those who are experiencing times of difficulty, especially for Israel and Gaza. Now, we pray for those whom we name with our voices or hold in our heart. Lord, hear our prayers. Pour out your strength and comfort. Touch their lives and souls with your warm hands. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now take a moment to offer our hearts and gifts. As we respond to God's grace and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can give to the ministry of Riceville United Methodist Church through our website and mail. Let us continue to worship God. Hello friends, I'm Pastor Eunsu. I'm so excited to share this time with you. So I have a question. Do you like to eat? Oh, I like to eat, I'm a foodie. What is your favorite food? My favorite foods are pizza, hamburger, or, oh yeah, Bojangle chicken, I love it. Well, what if, Every morning, you could open the door and walk out into the yard and just pick up your favorite food. And of course, you can all of that. That will be great, right? So today, we're going to talk about a story from the Bible, and it is like um, what we have just talked. It is about God's people, the Israelites. So they were stuck as prisoners in Egypt for a long time. And when they finally got free and left Egypt, they were trying to find the special land that God said they would have. But then they got lost in the desert for a while. After a few months of wandering around, the people started to grumble and complain against God. They said, God, we are so starving. We had it better when we were in Egypt. At least we had a, a plenty of food there. But now we are almost dying. God heard the people complaining. So God told Moses, who was their leader, that in the evening, God would provide 
quail, which is the meat. And in the morning, God would provide something special called manna, which is like a bread. And that would be on the ground for everyone to eat. So the people had to do was just go outside and pick it up and eat. It is so cool, right? Why did God do this for those grumblers and complainers? God did it so that they would know God loved them and God would take care of them. God had not brought them out of Egypt so that they just feel starving or hungry in the desert. Sometimes we grumble and we complain. We forget that God loves us and God provides us um, with everything that we need. So this week, instead of grumbling and complaining, let us say, thank you, God. Let us do that right now through our prayers. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us what we need. Sometimes we grumble and complain. When we do, help us remember that every good thing we have comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to follow the service here on the vine and to worship with us. Throughout the uh, first couple months of the year, we looked at what God intended for us. And here uh, in this season of Lent, we're looking at ways that we have kind of messed things up and our need for Jesus Christ to redeem us. So uh, today we're going to look at an interesting story from Exodus chapter 16 um, about God providing us with manna and, uh, and, and how that um, provides, um, how God is always providing for our needs. Let's pick up chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I'll test them whether they'll follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it'll be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he's heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? Then we're going to skip down to verse 11. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I've heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God. For us, the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, you are not only our creator, but you are our provider and you give us all that we need. Help us to be content with what we have and satisfied in the love that you share with us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Once upon a time, the story goes, there lived a farmer who raised chickens. Wonderful, plump, juicy chickens that cooked up beautifully. Except one summer a problem arose. It seemed that a fox had found its way into the hen house where the chickens were kept and would carry off a different chicken every night. 
The farmer tried setting traps, but the fox was too smart to take the bait and never got caught in the trap. The farmer tried staying awake and watching over the chicken coop, but he never did spot where that fox got in. No matter what the farmer tried, each morning when he checked, another chicken would be gone. And one morning he noticed that not only was a chicken gone, but another had a mark on it, as if maybe the fox had tried to snatch two chickens at once. Aha, the farmer said to himself, this is no longer a hungry fox, this is a greedy fox. So that same night, the farmer took two of his plumpest chickens and laced them together. Two chickens, three legs, like in a three-legged race at the county fair. And the next morning, when the farmer awoke, he found the fox in the chicken yard, the pair of laced-together chickens blocking the tunnel that the fox had used to get under the fence. Its mouth was still around both chickens, for it refused to let go of its prize. The farmer had no trouble trapping it. The fox's greed led to its own undoing. You know, there's a big difference between meeting needs and meeting greeds, isn't there? Now, I'm not going to say that greedy people don't ever get their greedy needs met. You only have to look around to see that some of them get that and more. Not all of them get their just desserts either, the way this fox did. But I am prepared to say that God cares about us and will help us meet our needs, period. God will meet our needs but not our greeds. If we insist on meeting our greeds, well, then we're on our own. The Hebrews who fled Egypt under Moses' leadership in our story today, they're wandering around the desert, trying to put the past behind them, looking for a better future. And there's no doubt they need help. They are hungry, they are thirsty, they are tired, they're homeless for crying out loud. So they grumble and complain to Moses. They even say they want to go back and be slaves in Egypt. But that is not God's plan. And so Moses in turn prays to God. And well, God answers the people's prayers. They need food. So God sends flocks of quail in the evening. And in the morning at dawn, God sends frosted flakes for breakfast. The Hebrews call it manna. I call it frosted flakes because look at verse 14. When the layer of dew had lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. Looks like frosted flakes to me. And if you look over at verse 31, it says the taste of it was like wafers made of honey. I'm just reading the scripture. What more could they ask for? Their prayers have been answered. Where there seemed to be no way, God has made a way. And not only that, but they're great. Sorry about that. But God must have known what the people were like. Because God gave instructions to go along with the manna. They are to gather only what they need for each day and no more. In fact, God clearly says that any extra they try to gather for themselves will just spoil. You see, God knows their needs and He knows their greeds. Nevertheless, being human, the people didn't heed the instructions. They gladly received this gift of salvation, this un expected manna from heaven, and then their greed took over. Some of them tried to stockpile the manna, even though they were told just to take enough for one day. So the extra manna that the Hebrews tried to stockpile would spoil, a fact that leaves them grumbling all the more. Their stomachs have been fed, but their greed has not. There's more. The writer of the passage wants to make sure we know that it is God's hand in this, and it's not just some phenomenon or pattern which these poor, uneducated Hebrews don't pick up on. After all, based on a week's worth of experience, they might figure the rule of thumb for manna goes something like this. Manna spoils after one day. But God actually says they can collect two days worth of manna on the sixth day. One day's worth for the sixth day and another day's worth for the Sabbath day. That way they won't be working on the Sabbath. And they can rest, and they can worship, and they can be together. But won't that extra day's provision spoil? Nope. For God allows them to collect enough to meet their needs. Not only their physical needs, but also their spiritual needs. God is willing to help meet our needs. 
but not our greeds. I think about how much God has provided for me in my own life, especially back when I was younger. When I was 25, I entered Duke Divinity School. The only problem was I couldn't afford it. Sure, I could have gone to my parents or grandparents for assistance. I suspect they would have helped me out. I could always take out a loan at the bank, but I didn't want to ask my family for help, and I sure didn't want to take out another bank loan because I already had one from going to law school. I was broke, beyond broke. I was in debt up to my eyeballs. And this just in, the Duke ain't cheap. Now, our two brilliant and talented full-time associates both went to Duke on full merit scholarships. But that was not the case for yours truly. What in the world was I going to do? Well, my pastor back home in High Point told me that I could apply to be a student pastor, which would allow me to serve a small church while I was studying at Duke. I thought, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The whole reason I'm going to Duke is to learn how to be a pastor. I'm not qualified to do this now. Except there are churches that know that, and they take it on as part of their ministry to help train up new pastors. I was appointed to a small church outside Roxburgh, North Carolina, about 45 minutes north of Durham. And they gave me a stipend and a parsonage to live in, and along with a small conference scholarship, I was able to pay for my school and my bills. God met my needs. We in America are caught up in a culture that promotes greed. Our worst instincts are played to by advertisers needing to hawk all their wares. We're wooed by six commercials on TV every 10 minutes and ads all over the internet. We're bombarded by promises of easy, no pain credit, seduced by beautiful faces promising either that we can enjoy the lifestyles of the rich and famous or at the worst, we could benefit from the bargains flashed to us on the home shopping network. Do we need all this stuff? I believe it was Mick Jagger who once famously said, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you'll find you get what you need. Not that it's wrong to want things or to have things, but we're conf frequently confusing wants and needs, or needs and greeds. Advertising no longer communicates information to help us meet a need. Now it convinces us we can't do without something we don't actually need. The old marketer's maxim advises, sell the sizzle, not the steak. We've come to believe we can't live without the sizzle. And further, we deserve the sizzle along with the steak. We've become shamefully greedy, pushing people out of the way for Beanie Babies, Zuzu Pets, Nintendos, or whatever is the latest fad. We've overfished the striped bass population in the Cape Fear River, and the southern flounder population in our precious salt water around Wrightsville Beach. We've almost made rhinos extinct for their horns and many whale species for their blubber. We've cut down rainforests hundreds and thousands of years old. But worse, we've come to believe Gordon Gecko's lies from the 1980s, that greed is good, that it's okay to be greedy. We've shut our ears to God's commands that we be good stewards of everything we've been given dominion over. The earth, the plants, the animals, even our neighbors. We think nothing of the next generation and only look out for ourselves. We're not much different from the Hebrews in today's scripture lesson. We fail to listen. Our greed clogs our ears. We want two, three, four, a hundred days worth of manna all in one gathering. Or to put it into a framework that Jesus used, we are so intent on building bigger barns so that we can fill it with more stuff that we become too future-oriented and we miss the present. We miss out on life now, today. We fail to hear Jesus' words to the man who kept building bigger barns to store more of his crops. Jesus said, You fool, this very night your soul will be required of you. As with the hungry Hebrews and the manna, God gives us what we need. And in those times, we need more, like with a double helping of manna to cover the weekend's two days. God will provide, but not if we want two days to simply meet our greeds. There's another side of this manna story, of course, one we have to read between the lines in order to get. 
What if the people spent all their time gathering manna? Days, weeks, months worth of it. As much as they could collect and store up. Well, they'd have no life together, would they? What would happen to relationships? They'd become slaves to their own greed. Is that really any different from the slavery they were living under in Egypt? We're going to talk about that more next week, but perhaps a closing illustration can help. It comes from one of our better television evangelists, uh, the late, great Michael Landon. You see, my wife loves Little House on the Prairie. And in one episode of Little House, farming hasn't worked out so well. So Pa Ingalls moves the family to a new state. You see, gold's been discovered there, so Pa decides, well, it's worth a try. They stop in town for provisions and meet a minister who befriends them. And a conversation about Sunday school ensues. And when the wagon's loaded, Pa Ingalls says with that winning Michael Landon smile, So long, Reverend. Maybe you could say a prayer. We find gold. To which the wise and kindly minister says, I can't ask God to help you locate gold, Mr. Ingalls, but I will pray for you and your family's happiness and welfare. Pa Ingalls looks lovingly at Ma Ingalls, and you can see that the minister's words have at least momentarily gotten them back on track, helped them to reorder their priorities. Pa says, that'd be fine, Reverend. That'd be just fine. And off they drive. Even if you've never seen the show, can you resonate with that? Or let's put it another way. If you were Pi Ingalls and the minister said he could pray for one or the other, finding gold or for you and your family's happiness and welfare, which would you choose? The gold, right? <laughs> no, there's no guarantee that gold is going to bring you happiness and welfare. God meets our needs, not our greeds. Let's give attention to God's instructions about how to use what we are given wisely. Let us be a people of thanksgiving, grateful for both the manna which feeds our bodies and the Christ, the bread of heaven, that feeds our souls. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we've seen it time and time again where you have met our needs at just the right time. We were wondering how we would ever get through it. And now looking back, we know that your hand was always there. And yet for some reason, we still worry about our future. Lord, help us to place our future in your hands and enjoy the moment, knowing that you will take care of us today, tomorrow, and forever. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are just surrounded by noise that tells us we need more, more, more. I don't think that's exactly how God wants us to live. I think he wants us to live more simply. Just take enough manna for today. You don't need two days worth of manna. Unless it's, you know, the weekend. And God has provided you with all that you need for that day. I would like to invite you to participate in a practice that uh, we're doing in our family uh, throughout the season of Lent. And that is to find things in your house that you no longer need and either throw them out or give them away. We're doing a bag a day, like a trash bag full, just like you would take out your trash or take out your recycling. We're also taking out another bag of things we simply, that are in the house that we simply don't need every day during Lent. I invite you to finish out Lent doing the same, or at least this week. Find a bag a day of things that you no longer need and just get rid of it because we don't need all that stuff. We really don't. God's going to provide with all that you need, so trust in Him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.